there are many people who think that Elijah and Moses will be the two witnesses who are to come. And that's not the case. We know that's not the case. And I'm going to tell you why that's not the case. Now, this is why some people think that the two witnesses will be literally Elijah and Moses, that Elijah and Moses are going to come back down from heaven to the earth and be the two witnesses for three and a half years. As the Bible says, there will be two witnesses for three and a half years. They think it because it says these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, these, this is talking about things that happened during the time of Elijah and Moses. They have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. That was Elijah, you know, and during his lifetime, he prayed and uh, the heavens were shut up. The rain didn't fall for a great deal of the time that Elijah was prophesying. That was the case. There was no rain on the earth. And so that sounds like Elijah. And then it also says that they will have power over waters to turn them to blood. Now that sounds like Moses, right? Moses struck the waters and they, they uh, uh, turned to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues. Moses was, of course, God's instrument to uh, call down the plagues of God down upon the Egyptians. So people say, well, that sounds like Elijah and Moses. So it must be Elijah and Moses. Here's how we know it's not Moses, because we know that Moses died. The Bible says that Moses died in his generation, in his day and time, and the Lord himself buried Moses. Why did the Lord bury Moses himself? I believe that probably because the Bible doesn't tell us, but I would say that it might be because that the Lord was concerned that they would make an idol out of Moses' bones or make an idol out of his grave because he was so revered. He was such an instrument of God to the people. And so they might have idolized his dead body. And so the Lord buried Moses in a place where no one knew. And so no one to this day knows where Moses' body was buried. But he died. And the Bible says that it is appointed unto a man once to die, and then the judgment. It would not be fitting uh, for God to have Moses, who died and went to heaven, to come back and, onto the earth and, and uh, go through uh, another period of time and a death by martyrdom. As the Bible says, it will end for the two witnesses. They will be put to death. They will be killed by the beast. And so uh, that's why we know that it's not Moses. And so uh, there's no reason then to believe either that it would be Elijah. Elijah did not die, of course. He was taken up into heaven in a chariot of fire. And, and he so he na never died. He never went through that, that death. Neither did Enoch. You know, Enoch uh, was taken up, and he never died. Uh, but there's no reason to think that these two witnesses are Elijah and Moses uh, just because they're going to do things similar uh, in their lifetime that is similar to what happened in the life of Elijah and Moses. They're operating in the same spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now, the prophet Malachi did tell us that the word of the Lord is that Behold, I am going to send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, so that I will not come and smite the land with a curse. But Jesus told us that that prophecy has already been fulfilled. Jesus said, Elijah does indeed come, and he will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but have done to him whatever they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man will suffer at their hands. 
Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them about John the Baptist. I'm going to try to talk here a little bit about the two witnesses because uh, I've been asked a lot of questions about the two witnesses and I, I had a blog about it and uh, I had to cut down my website. And so I cut it down, my website way down and I had to eliminate a lot of stuff. And so let's talk a little bit here about uh, in Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses. I will give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, that's three and a half years, clothed in sackcloth, like John the Baptist. They, this reminds us of John the Baptist. Uh, and these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth, and this reminds us of the prophecy of Zechariah. Behold, a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. And then answered I, and said to him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick, and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again, and said to him, What are these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And then he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. Now, this reminds us of a verse in Jeremiah uh, about fire coming out of the mouth of God's prophet. When it's saying fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies, if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not. Now, I've already read this verse in there. In the days of their prophecy, it won't rain, and they will have power to turn water into blood and to smite the earth with all kinds of plagues as often as they want to. And why would they do that? Because they want their purpose is to be God's witnesses in this world. That is God's primary purpose. <laughs> That's why we're waiting for the second coming of the Lord Jesus. If the Everyone was saved that was going to be saved, Jesus would come today. Why are we waiting? Is because God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. And so he's waiting for everyone to come in that's going to come in. All the prophecies will be fulfilled. Everything will, will uh, be totally uh, carried out according to God's plan. But in God's plan... Uh, everyone that is going to be saved will be saved, and then the end will come. Jesus said this gospel will go to all the world, and then the end will come. So this is what they're doing. The two witnesses are, are the, the example for us all. They are witnessing. That's why they're called the two witnesses. They're witnessing. They're telling people about Jesus. They're, they're spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they will show signs and wonders. God will do miracles in their behalf to show the people that these two are from God. Many will come to repentance because of these two witnesses who are examples to us. We should all be doing what these two witnesses are doing. And so when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit, and, and the Bible is clear, this is the same beast out of the sea, the beast out of the bottomless pit, this is the Antichrist, and he shall make war against them. The Bible says the Antichrist, the beast, will make war against the saints and will overcome them. And so this is the beast who makes war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall be in the street of the great city, which is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So this is going to happen to them in Jerusalem, just as Jesus died in Jerusalem. Now, I saw some man was preaching, saying that, well, the two witnesses will never leave 
Jerusalem. You know, the Bible does not say that. The Bible does not say a lot of things that people assume about the two witnesses. Just because they die in Jerusalem, that doesn't mean that they will spend three and a half years in Jerusalem. The Bible doesn't tell us where they will be. Uh, our Lord Jesus lived his life out for 33 years on this earth. He spent very little of that time in Jerusalem. Now, he spent some time in Jerusalem. There was, there was time when he was in Jerusalem. He visited it when he was a boy, 12 years old. He was, he was in Jerusalem during part of his ministry. But the biggest part of his life, the major part of his life, he was in Nazareth. He was in Capernaum. He was in the villages and towns of Judea and Galilee and, and even as far north as Tyre and Sidon and he did not spend very much of his time in Jerusalem when you consider the 33 years of his life. So we don't have any idea how long uh, the, the two witnesses will be in Jerusalem. They may only be in Jerusalem on that one day when they die, for all we know. We don't know that the two witnesses are going to be in Jerusalem all, all the time. It's possible. But they could also, for all we know, they could, they could travel anywhere and everywhere for all we know. We don't know where they will be or where they will go before the day that they die in Jerusalem. Likewise, people assume uh, so much about the two witnesses. And we cannot assume. People think, well, one will be a Jew and one will be a Gentile. We don't know that. Uh, some people say, well, they will both be Jewish. We don't know that. Some people say they will both be Gentiles. We don't know that. Some people think, uh, people make a lot of assumptions about the two witnesses that the Bible does not tell us. And we should not make assumptions. The Bible says, you know, don't, don't add to the books. Don't add words. Don't make up stuff. Uh, let's just stick with, with uh, trying to understand it to the best of our ability. Uh, and so their dead bodies shall lie in that great city of Jerusalem, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies and not suffer them to be put in graves uh, for three and a half days, just as they witnessed for three and a half years, uh, 42 months. So will they, their dead bodies lie for three and a half days and the people will be the people of this world who hate Jesus Christ and hate the two witnesses and hate the gospel. They will rejoice. Uh, the Bible says uh, that uh, they will make merry and send gifts to one another because these two prophets had tormented those that dwell on the earth. But after three and a half days, the spirit of life from God will enter into them. They will stand upon their feet and great fear will fall upon all those who see it. And they will hear a great voice from heaven saying, come up here and they will ascend to heaven in a cloud and their enemies will behold it. And that same hour, there'll be a great earthquake and the 10th part of the city will fall and the earthquake will slay 7,000 and the remnant will be afraid and give glory to the God of heaven. Because we are in the last days, the two witnesses are alive somewhere on the earth today. And from what we know from the Bible and from what we know from the way the Lord has always worked in the past, they may well be just two obscure people who are not blowing their own horn they are not going around calling themselves the two witnesses. They're not drawing attention to themselves. They may not even know each other at this time. They may not even know that they are the two people who will one day soon be the two witnesses. They may well be what we would call just two ordinary people, like the poor fishermen that Jesus called to be his disciples. At this time, they may well be just growing closer to the Lord each day, growing in grace as God is preparing them to do the work that he has for them to do in the coming final days.